This video is the product of collaborative research between ICRISAT and its partners. ICRISAT is a non-profit international organization for science-based agricultural development. Established in 1972, it is one of the 16 centers supported by more than 50 donor governments, foundations and development banks through membership in the Consultative Group for International Agricultural Research CGIAR. At least four Asian countries burn large quantities of rice straw. But this rice straw can be converted into valuable manure. This video describes the steps in this conversion in the semi-arid tropics and is targeted at scientists in the semi-arid tropical countries. Rice and wheat straw are valuable animal feed in most Asian countries, but are commonly burnt in some of these countries. According to a report by Dr. B. S. Sidhu and co-workers, Punjab Agricultural University, Ludhiana, in Punjab, India, about 12 million tons of rice and wheat straw are burnt annually, and with it burns the valuable nitrogen contained in the straw, which was assessed at 18 million US dollars. 86% of ICRISAT's budget in 1999. Parts of Vietnam, Sri Lanka, Philippines, Indonesia and India burn large quantities of rice straw. Instead, an eco-friendly and useful alternative is to make compost with this crop residue. According to Dr. V.C. Cuevas of the University of the Philippines at Los Banos, Several farmers in a high rainfall area of the Philippines have been composting rice straw for the last few years. The method is targeted as a village level enterprise because farmers in intensively cropped areas having crop residues in excess of demand are unlikely to adopt the method. Few farmers in these areas practice the simple process of composting cattle dung let alone composting rice straw. During 1996-97, we developed and tested the procedure on a small scale in 10 kilogram lots of rice straw using cement cylinders as digesters. In 1999, the procedure was scaled up to 500 kilogram lots of rice straw. Each heap was 5 meters long, 1.5 meters wide and 1.5 meters high at the beginning of the composting cycle. Multiple heaps of this size allowed composting of over 8 tons of rice straw in one go and it took about 45 days to obtain usable compost. The ingredients needed for composting of rice straw are water, the fungus Aspergillus abamori, rock phosphate and urea. Aspergillus abamori is grown aseptically in flasks or wide mouth bottles containing a 2 to 3 cm layer of potato dextrose broth. Laboratory stored agar slopes of the mother culture serve as the inoculum. Mix the 6 to 10 day old culture broth of the fungus in a blender to obtain a fungal suspension. Each ml of the suspension will have about 1 billion spores or fungal propagules. Urea and powdered rock phosphate can be obtained from local markets and the fungus from any microbial germ plasm collection. Rice straw needs to be collected from farmers fields and brought to the composting point. It can be made into bundles of convenient size 5 or 10 kilograms. In a big tank prepare large quantity of a soaking solution by thoroughly mixing 1 milliliter of the fungal suspension and 1 gram of urea for every liter of water. Dip the bundles one by one into the soaking solution. Drain the excess solution by placing the bundles on a slope lined with a plastic sheet. The drip should be collected and recycled. Take the wet rice straw to the location of the compost heap. Line the bed for the heap with 2 to 6 cm diameter branches of a tree. 
This helps in aeration in the heaped rice straw. The wet rice straw will generally have 70% moisture. Mix 6% rock phosphate to it and place on the bed uniformly until 500 kg rice straw has been stacked. Any quantity of rice straw can be composted at one time in heaps of 500 kg. Cover the heap with a plastic net that has 2 cm square holes. The net should be further covered with a 20 to 30 cm thick layer of rice straw. This will minimize water loss while providing the necessary aeration. The rice straw used as cover can be wet in plain water before use. Although use of the plastic net is not essential, we use it to separate the experimental rice straw from the cover to determine the exact quantities of compost from each heap. The major key to success is the ability to maintain about 70% moisture in the heap during composting. Any major errors in this step will delay composting. Precise measurement of moisture percent is a time-consuming process and needs laboratory facilities. Over the years, we have developed a watering and mixing schedule for the heaps. We use the method of feeling by hand and later confirm the moisture percent by actual measurements. But this is not a scientifically sound method and we are looking for an alternate solution. Also, watering heaps with sprinklers did not work because water generally ran down the sides instead of going inside the heap. We ensured that the water penetrated the heap by using a lance with a sharp point to pierce the heap of rice straw. Pierce the lance deepest possible with an aim to water uniformly. Use about 100 litres of water at day 7. Mixing and watering the straw with about 240 litres water at day 15. About 150 litres of watering through the lance at day 20. And mixing plus 200 litres of water at day 30 is generally sufficient. Composting can be terminated at day 45 by which time it is ready for processing or for field application. By this time, its carbon and nitrogen ratio is reduced from a ratio of 40 to 1 to a ratio of 15 to 1. At this stage, strands of the rice straw are weak and twisting can readily break a fistful of it. Some sections of the heap reach such a stage even by day 30. But in some other pockets, rice straw is still strong and will need more time to decompose. Normally, there is no need to process the compost when ready, but processing greatly improves its presentation. When passed through a shredder, normally used for breaking soil clods, it is possible to obtain a friable, soft compost. And when passed through a meat mincer, it can be converted into pellets or thick noodles. The process of composting was developed at Ikrisat Patanjeru with funds partially from the Food and Agricultural Organization FAO of the United Nations. The scientists of the Punjab Agricultural University, Ludhiana, Punjab, India, our partners in this endeavor, evaluated the compost in the field experiments at their location with funds partially from the Asian Development Bank, ADB, through ICRISAT. The financial support of the FAO and ADB is gratefully acknowledged. The project is in its fourth year of the field experimentation. It has 10 treatments involving combinations of the compost with chemical fertilizers. These are designed to compare the practice of incorporation and burning of rice straw with the application of compost. The treatment receiving compost generally yielded greater 4 to 9 percent more than that receiving an equivalent quantity of burnt rice straw. This video film is designed as an initial step to persuade partner scientists in the relevant countries to try the method of composting as a village level enterprise, not only for rice straw but also for other crop residue burnt in different countries. We hope that scientists in these countries will evaluate the process further, including its economic viability. For every ton of dry rice straw, you will need about 3000 litres of water, about 1700 litres to start with and the rest during composting, 1 kilogram urea, 
1 liter suspension of fungus Aspergillus avamori, 60 kilograms of powdered rock phosphate. After the composting, you should get about 1,700 kilogram compost containing about 70% moisture. Frequently asked questions. How much labor is needed? Composting 1 ton of rice straw needs about 80% hours of labor that is 87% of the total cost or about 96 US dollars at the current minimum wage of 1.2 US dollars per 8 hour day. But this technology is still being refined and all operations are done manually. Eventually the various steps will be mechanized at least partially. Very little labor will then be required. Question number 2. What is the cost of production? Manual composting is not economical for the rice wheat farmers in the regions where rice straw is burnt in India. Again, this could change with mechanization. However, manual composting appears to be economically attractive for the emerging floriculture industry in developing countries. Question number 3. Can the rice straw be composted in the field where it is lying without having to collect it into a heap? With some modifications, we hope to compost rice straw in the field itself without collecting it into a heap. Research in this direction will begin in 2001. Please contact O.P. Rupela, Ikrisat, Patancheru for any clarifications.